than him? Toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to you a few, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. And then um, we'll have Miss Gigi for our prayer. Amen. Yes, sir. Guys, thank you for this day. Thank you for our pastor. Thank you for this prayer. Um, thank you for helping us with our problems that we need. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for believing in us. And we'll thank believe God. in you always with our hearts and when we die. Amen. 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 I'm so rude. I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Kyla. I will be our MC today. And um, following up behind my welcome, we will have Justice with a welcome. Good morning and welcome to our 2023 annual day. We thank you for coming to worship and with us today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, y'all ready to have some church for real now? Amen. We done got past the other stuff. Yeah. For real, for real. Now we can actually have a little church. Amen. All right, next we're going to have um, our dancers for worship. Get them a hand clap of praise.
doing better than that. Good job. Good job. Good job. I don't know who it's gonna be big for, but they say it's gonna be big. All right, so um, the next thing we'll be doing in our service is communion. Y'all be very fun. All right, I'm just checking. Um, you doing that? You doing that? You doing that? Yeah. I guess you are. Brother Mac is gonna be doing our baptism. I mean, not our baptism, my communion. <laughs> Good morning. All praises to the living and loving God, to Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit who guides and directs our daily path. Love, honor, adoration, and appreciation to our pastor, to Reverend Barnett, and to all of God's children present in this house today. It was that night that Christ took bread and lifted it up unto his father and gave thanks. And after he had given thanks, he gave it unto his disciples and he said unto them, this is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat ye all of it. Shall we eat together? And then also in the self-same manner, he took the cup and lifted it also unto his father and gave thanks. And then he gave it also unto his disciples. And he said unto them, this is my blood, which is shed for the remission of all of your sins. Drink ye all of it. Shall we drink together? And Christ said, as often as you do this, you remember the great cost that I paid to set you free. Christ commanded us. He did not suggest, but he commanded us to do this, not because mama do it, not because grandma do it, not because everyone else is doing it, but Christ commanded us to do this. And he said, as often as you do this, you show that you remember the great cost that I paid. When we do this, we reflect on just how much Christ loved us. We reflect on just how much we mean to him. Christ said, as often as we do this, as often as we commune, we remember that we were on our way to hell. But Christ said, I'd rather die for them than live here without them. And so he came down to suffer, bleed, and die. That's why it's not a time to talk is not a time to text but if you really are obedient you remember you reflect how messed up we still are as our pastor say but yet I'm on my way to heaven because of what he did I've made some mistakes I've done some things willingly wrong but I'm on my way to heaven because of what he did. And when I reflect on that, it's not a time for me to text somebody. It's not a time for me to talk to my neighbor. It's a time for me to remember just how much I mean to the master. It's a time for me to understand and reflect just how precious I am to Jesus Christ. 
Christ didn't talk about it. He was about it. And he demonstrated just how much he loves us because he died for us. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father, our God in heaven, we come humbly before you this day, thanking and praising you, O oh gracious Master, for all of your bountiful blessings. Loving God, we bless your holy name for yet another opportunity to come into your house. Father, we thank you for all that we've been through all week long. Doors shut in our face. Friends and family have walked away. But loving God, you've been right there. And we thank you, oh gracious God. We praise your name for every trial that you've brought us through, for every mountain that you've brought us over. Loving God, we praise you for keeping us. Thank you, righteous God, that we don't look like what we're going through. Thank you, O oh gracious God, that we're not hopeless, but we got hope, O oh gracious Master, because you got up, Father. And because you got up, we have the victory. We'll have some trials. We'll have some heartaches. We'll have some setbacks. But glory to God that everything is going to work out. Hallelujah, yeah, that it's going to work out for my good because I am your child. I belong to you, and you promised that you'll take care of me. You promised, oh gracious God, that you'll meet my every need. You promised, righteous God, that when I'm lonely, you'll be a friend. When I'm in darkness, you'll be a light unto my path. When I'm broke, you'll meet my needs. When my heart is heavy, you'll massage an aching heart. Hallelujah, Father. Glory to your name. Glory to your name because you've been good. You are faithful, Father, even when I'm unfaithful. Hallelujah, yeah, today because you've been good to me. Loving God, we pray today for your anointing, for your presence in this place. We pray right now, Father, trusting and believing, lifting up Pastor Tennyson unto you, asking you for your anointing, asking for your presence, asking for preaching power, asking that you, O oh gracious God, would stand him up and then stand up in him, O oh gracious Master, Use him in a marvelous and a mighty way. Give him a word from on high today, Father. Move today in this worship service as only you can. Bless the man of God that you've placed at this house. Lead him, Father, that he would lead us, your people, according to your will and your word. And then, loving God, unstop deaf ears today. Open the blind eyes, Father. Allow us to hear from you. Allow us to hear from you through the shepherd that you placed at this house. Use him today. Please, righteous God, speak, Father. Allow your people to hear today. Somebody's suffering. Somebody don't know which way to turn. Somebody needs a word of encouragement. Use your shepherd today. Please, God, show up like only you can, and then show out in this house today. Please, God, magnify yourself through Pastor Tennyson today. Righteous God will be ever so careful. We'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, Father, because you are worthy. You're worthy today. Hallelujah, you're worthy. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen and thank God. All right. Okay. I got a joke for y'all. If you already know the answer, please don't answer. Okay, but, okay. If you do know the answer or you think you know the answer, 
Just raise your hand. I'll pick on you, okay? Okay. Why don't Jesus wear jewelry? Somebody guess. Y'all don't know? Nobody want to guess? Because he break every chain. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Y'all laughing? <laughs> All right. Now, for serious, the next person I'm bringing up here, I need y'all to get as loud as y'all can. Not because of who it is. Okay, maybe because of who it is. I still need y'all to get loud, though, okay? Because she coming up here to introduce the speaker. It's somebody special to me. No, I'm just playing. But um, my sister, Miss Kanaya Tennyson. <laughs> to introduce the speaker. Um, y'all already know him. I promise y'all already know him. Y'all might not see him all the time, but y'all know him. Um, basically, so I'm gonna tell y'all the theme first so y'all y'all on board. So the theme this year is let him cook. So if y'all don't know what that means, because you know y'all might be a little seasoned, basically all it means is like when God is doing his thing or when somebody's doing something good, talking good, doing something good for you, you be quiet, let him cook, let him, let him do what he doing. Kind of like when your mama tell you like, hey mama, where we going? Just ride. Same concept, same concept. So I'm gonna bring out the speaker. Our speaker today is gonna be Adam. So make sure y'all give it up for my mama. Yeah, hey Jack. Y'all know we from Pleasant Grove. I was going to say, hey, but what's up, everybody? <laughs> All right, so as she said, today's theme is let him cook. So the scripture is Jeremiah 29 and 11. Right. So I'm going to read it twice. Right. I'm going to read the New, New King James Version, and then I'm going to read scriptures 10 through 12 from the Message Bible because it talks a little better. So the New King James Version says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, 10 through 12 says, in the New King James Version, says, this is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon's 70 years are up, and not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. Okay. Now let's get into it. So, y'all know I'm fat. For everybody that, for those that don't know, I like to eat. So the first thing I thought when he let him cook is what y'all mom tell y'all when you when she in the kitchen. Don't come in here. Don't touch my stuff. Let me work. Now when it comes out, it's going to be great. But until then, I don't need you bothering me. I don't need you interrupting my process. Yeah. God's the same way. I think they got that from him, actually. Yeah. They said, he says, let him do what he's going to do. Relax and take, a, take it easy. Yeah. When you try to step in front of God, he won't help you. He won't help you. Yeah. He'll let you do that yourself. Yeah. And then when you finally figure out that you can't do it by yourself, then he'll tell you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what happens when you rush a shelf? Anybody know? It's nasty, right? It's something's not done, something's missing, something's not right. So how do you fix that? Let the cook roll. Everybody, you don't put somebody in charge unless you think they know what they're doing, right? You don't fo people don't follow a weak leader. So why y'all treat God like he's a weak leader? Next, what's the worst part about eating bad foods is you're going to get sick. Some of us are suffering from, I think it's what's called a spiritual sickness. God stopping y'all from getting what you what he promised you because you're not ready for it. You can't handle it. Your body won't be able to digest what he's giving you. Then the next thing, the next thing that I said when I saw let him cook is the benefits of patience. What happens when you actually let God do what he's do what he told you to do? It said 
I found that it opens new avenues for God to show himself. You can't notice the totality of God if you're in the front lines. You can't see everything that he's got to offer you if you're always trying to do it, if you're always trying to step in, if you're always trying to be in the forefront. He doesn't operate like that. He's a let God. So he's going to let you figure out, figure it out that you can't do it without him because he already knows that. You probably know it too, but you, you're not, you're going to try it. Just like, just like kids, just like parents, you're going to try it. You think you can get away with it. You can't. Then it because I can't hold this to talk. Okay. Next thing is that it increases your praise when you wait. Y'all ever waited? On, your parents ever promised y'all something? And when you're waiting on it, it seems like it takes forever. It seems like, oh, I don't know if they're going to keep their word. I don't know if it's solid. God, you don't ever have to worry about that. Because when he says it, it's a guaranteed promise. There's never been a time that he's ever, so, that he's ever said he's going to do something and not deliver it on it. So why, would you not, so why would you not wait on him? It just doesn't make sense. Then, last thing, cooking in a spiritual sense. God is perfectly good. He's never made a, never made a mistake. He's never led anybody astray. So when he tells you, he's telling you to wait, there's a reason. He, when he's preparing you to receive his blessings. When, the song said, when y'all just see me out there sweating hard. I know y'all did. I know y'all did. <laughs> but it said, but there was a part in the song that says, you won't have room to contain his blessings. Yeah. Yeah. So how do, you get, how do you get room to get what God's planning to you? He got to remove some stuff. But removing stuff take time, as anybody is whoever moved can ever attest to. So it ta- so you gotta he gotta space that out. You can't get all that stuff at one time. You gotta move. The, gotta get stuff out of the way to get new stuff. I got one more point for y'all, and then I'm getting, then I'm gonna get out y'all way. Yeah, go and get out. When I I read the King, I read the Message Bible for a reason. It says that is when at the time that the Scripture was being read, or whatever. Jeremiah and the Israel and the Israelites were in captivity for seventy years. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it back one more time because I can't. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a little forgetful. It says, "As soon as Babylon seventy years are up, and not a day before." That's that's the part that's important. He said, "Not a day before." So at the top, he's gonna give you. A, he gave you a specific time. I love God. He told you when it's going to happen. He told you how it's going to happen. He told you where it's going to happen. So all you got to do is just wait on it. Let him be, let him be there, and I promise y'all everything's going to work out for you. So I like God, thank y'all for y'all time. Y'all can do better than that. That was real good, Baby, clap for that, baby. That made me think about a a good roast. You take it out too soon, it be all rough and stuff. Y'all know, all tough. You let it cook, right? Like seven hours to be tender. (laughs) That's all that made me think about. I just thought I should let y'all know. I do want some roast. Okay, but um, next we're going to have a song from our choir, and then Pops is going to come up and give us a word, so... Bernie, do your thing.
go to sucking on that neck bone, your teeth come out. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna do you like that. We ain't, we ain't gonna do you like that. So, so, so I'm just telling you what I had a taste for. What was on my mind, Robel? So I had four packs of neck bones, smoked neck bones, not really smoked neck bones. I had my onion. I got my greens. Got my black eyed peas. No, and 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 mac. I spit out the spit. And I didn't realize that it was gonna take so long. Then, y'all, I was full when it got done because I'm tasting the pot liquor. See, I don't have to taste the ingredients. I don't have to taste what I'm cooking. I taste the juice because if the look is right, uh-oh, and I ain't talking about that, the one you buy the stuff. That one too, but we ain't talking about that right now. I'm talking about the one when you let all that stuff work together. Ooh. And you be doing like this. You get full of it, Sister Cameron. You know how you cook. You get full when you when it's done. You can't eat meat. Man, that's what God did. God said, "Listen, I'm gonna kill two birds in one stone. I got a plan for you. But here's the deal: you're gonna be in captivity for seven years." What in the world does captivity have to do with the plan? It don't mean nothing to you. It wasn't your plan. It was his. I don't want that. Well, I really didn't cook for you. See, when I go home and I cook, my kids don't get to ask what they want. This is what I'm the cook. This is what I had a taste for. You either eat it or go to bed hungry. I ain't no three meals getting cooked. I'm not cooking this, this for you, this for No. That's why wrong. That's why you ain't got no money. You're trying to feed all them different meals. This way it is today. Do you think them, them children is want to be in bondage? So look what God said. Can we, can we just read? I'm trying to tell you why you need to just let him cook. He what he say? This is the letter that the prophet Jer Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to what was left of the elders among the exiles, to the priests and the prophets and all the exiles whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken to Babylon from Jerusalem, including King Jehoiakim, the queen's mother, the government leaders, and all the skilled laborers and craftsmen. The letter was carried by Elisha, son of Shephon, the Jeremiah, uh, and son of Hilkiah, who are these names, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, had sent to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. This letter said, here are the ingredients. Can't cook without ingredients. Right. If you don't put no seasoning in it, it's going to be bland. <laughs> There's a whole lot of bland meals be cooking around here. Oh. Ain't no word to go in it. Uh -uh. Ain't no prayer in it. <laughs> ain't no fasting. <laughs> ain't no salt being applied. You, you ain't even got no savor no more. So as he's cooking, it don't have a taste. God said, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you to Babylon. Captivity. For 70 years. For your disobedience. But I would say not a day sooner or later. It wasn't 70 days and a half, 71. No, it was 70 years. 70 years, excuse me. It wasn't 70 years and a half or a month. It was on the 70th year they were released. But while you're in there, I'm going to marinate you. Don't you know marinated meat tastes better than regular meat? God marinated them for 70 years. Look what he said. Go on, build your houses and live there. Uh-huh, I'm going to give you a house you didn't build. See, you got to reject. I'm going to let you live like you uh, got it going on, but you're in bondage. Now, how are you going to be in bondage kicking? They, they were straight kicking it, y'all, in bondage. Let me read y'all. Y'all must think I ain't playing. This is the message from God of the angel armies. Israel's God to all the exiles I've taken from Jerusalem to Babylon. Look at this, y'all. Look, 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 look. Build houses and make yourselves at home. Put 
cutting garlands and eat what grows in them. Marry and have children. Encourage your children to marry and have children so that you'll thrive in that country and not waste away. Handle your business. Build houses. Grow crops. Get married and have children. They say get married and have children. Then teach your kids to have kids. Then teach your kids to have kids. So when I come get you, uh uh-oh. I got a whole meal. I got a whole nation. Oh, God. When I get you out, you're going to know how to build. You're going to know how to grow crop, and you're going to know how to reproduce. To take you back home, and you know how to handle your business. As the cook is cooking. You know, one of my friends said, their brother said, you know what? I was thinking about you the other day in your cooking. He said, ever since I've been knowing you, your ribs are the same. And I don't deviate from what works. Ooh, you get that letter. You get that letter. You get that letter. Some of you can't cook because you're always trying something. Some of you can't grow in God because you're always switching. Work the work that he gave you to work. If it tastes good, do that every time. All this trying stuff, it don't work. Did I say all this trying stuff don't work? And a lot of times when you go to restaurants, you go to restaurants because you know who the chef is. I'm already, y'all, come on. Y'all, come on, go with me. Come go with me, buddy. Come on, let's go over here. Let's go over here, buddy. How you know? I know the cook. I know it's good. Whatever you want on the menu, it's going to be. Come on over to Pastor here, Missionary Baptist Church. I know it's good. Whoever you come in contact with, they're going to they're gonna satisfy the needs. Because I know the. It is impossible for the cook to handle you and know what he's doing and you come out bad. The, the, ugh, the black eyed peas didn't argue with me. The, the smoke neck bones didn't get mad and ask me what I'm doing. Hey, raw food. Every time the cook moves you, you got a question. Food don't talk back. Fools do. Food don't talk back. Fools do. Food just cook. Fools complain. There's too much stuff. How you know? The cook know how bland you are. The cook know what you need to make you tasteful. Ooh. He know what it takes. He know, he know, he know how long to marinate it, boy, so it go to the bone. So every bite you get, it's a seasoned, tender, mouth-watering bite. Only at the black church. That the peas get out and say, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Peas be talking about, uh-uh. Don't cook me like that. You don't know what the, what the cook is taste, what his taste buds are. Because there was one time when I watched me black-eyed peas, y'all. I'm teaching about what I'm talking about. One time they're cooking black-eyed peas. One guy, one guy say, when you're cooking them, right, get your little bowl of black-eyed peas. And smush them up to make the lip of thick. <laughs> Don't be squishing me. <laughs> you don't understand. All y'all together make the pot of black eyed peas. Now, there might be some onion there. Some Neck bones in there. Complete seasoning. Little uh, chicken broth. Smoked paprika. Look, Miss Dad. Color 
people, all they know is Larry Season, Salt and Pepper. No. You need to open your palace up. There's, there's more seasons in the draw if you let it come out. Ah, some people are diabetic. I mean, got high blood pressure, so, so salt to mess them up. But only the cook know that. Uh oh. The black eyed pea don't know that. Ooh, y'all will get this to the house. Anyway, listen, listen. When I cook the ribs, right? Now, I have ate some people ribs. Now, tell they don't know what they're doing. Because they're gummy. Can I tell you what makes it gummy? It's got a membrane on the backside of it. That's, 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 that's bristle. That's, that's membrane. That's what holds it all together. And you can't ever cook it. Some of y'all are membrane. Can't cook you till we clean you. And what makes them ribs from sisters? Y'all pull that membrane out. See, there's another little piece of meat that be on it, right? I done got smart, you know. <laughs> I've matured a little bit, so I cut that off too so it's smooth. Yeah. So when you cut it, ain't number straight meat. <sighs> then, Mac, when you put it, get it ready, put it on the grill. Put it on the grill, you cook for an hour and a half on each side, then you wrap it up. And you check them in them bones, when that meat starts climbing up that bone like that, uh-oh. Now, as long as that meat laying there, they ain't ready, but then the meat starts moving back like that. <laughs> Some of y'all meat on the end of it, you still, oh, it's ready. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. When that meat pull back, that meat says, <laughs> it's tight up in here. That heat, done, that heat done got all the impurities out. I'm ready to be, I'm ready to feed some. Some of y'all are being grilled and you're mad because I ain't turned you over. Sometimes you can turn meat too much and you miss your season. You got to let it cook. You got to let it cook. And when it's good, say good. That heat sucked them seasons in. That, that's why y'all be sucking on my bones the, the, when you eat these. The gristle, the gristle, the gristle is tender. You know, some of the places you go, you get the gristle, break your teeth. That's when some of y'all ain't got teeth. But when that cooked, when that meat is cooked right, you eat that gristle. Oh, man. Oh, this, this boy know how to cook. Now, 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 Robert, help me. Robert Timmons. Melvin, help me. Melvin, cook. And I bought his pick. Give me that pick. You ain't doing nothing. You're bad. You're back bad. Get him. He said, now, don't cook it too tender. Because the competition, if it's too tender, you get disqualified. Sometimes it's good, but it's overcooked. But what I discovered ain't Margie. Only the cook knows it's overcooked. <laughs> Can I tell you I had a bad moment? I had a bad moment. And I'll cook. <sighs> this ain't never happened to me, but it happened to me before. This is this last night. Now my cousin John, me and him cook good together. We cook great together. I said, John, I got you at my I'm out of time. He said, what's going on, Fold? I said, I need to cook these bristles. So I'm going to season them, and you start the fire. Okay? We do this all the time. So he started the fire, and I put the grills on I put them on there. He forgot they was on there. Because he was preoccupied with his home. It happens. Every dog has his day. Pimps mess up, too. You know, players get, you know, they didn't get caught up, you know. You only get better at cooking when you burn something at least once. Quit thinking you ain't going to never burn nothing. I'm in this text. Man, we went over there. And them suckers was burnt. Three of them. Three whole brisket. They were just too hard. Thank God for Messiah. He loved me. When he told me, he just started licking on my feet. They were not edible for people. 
if they was ever put down. Some of you ain't. Some of you ain't edible for my people. But we can chop you up and make a chopped beef. We can serve you one way or only God knows how he's going to serve you. Now, I might be the rib. You might be the barbecue sauce. But quit trying to be the rib and you the barbecue sauce. Be who you are. Who determines that? The cook. a problem going in Babylon. He said, now you're only going to be here seven years. And on the seventh year, you're getting out. Now, I'm going to bless you. While you're there, build your house. It ain't true, but living it like it's yours. There's land. Plenty some fruit, some vegetables. And learn how to eat that. Ain't that what it says? It says, it, it says, make yourself at home. There and work for the country's wealth. Go make the wealth for the country's wealth. When God uses you and he cooks you, he's making the kingdom better. Quit trying to jump out the box. Quit trying to be something he didn't call you to be. You know what our problem is? We want to be everything. I'm not Mac. And I'm not Bernadette. They sure can't be me. Because he only made one of me. But together we make a team. I'm the me. He the, he the best one. He the best one. My guys are the cornbread. So we got a whole plate. So that the people can eat. So guess what? Let him cook. <laughs> she say, let him eat. No, let him cook. So you can be fed to the people. That was the purpose for the bondage of being captive for 70 years. It wasn't just there to be there. He need all of us. To make the full course meal complete. Some of you are vegetable because we have vegetarians. Some of you are sweets because we got people with sweet too. Some of you the bread to sop it up. Some of you are the sauce to go on top of it to give it a little more twist, a little more kick. Some of you the hot sauce to put a little spice in it. Some of you the onion called greens ain't good without onion. Everything that God uses make it taste different for the mouth that is far. Oh God. Let God cook in your life. He knows exactly what you are. He knows exactly how long to cook you. He know what size to put with you. Some of you are putting these people in, they don't fit the meal. Uh-oh. Some of these people you're marrying, they don't fit the meal. They don't go with what we got going on. Let the cook cook. Look what he said. Ain't that something? Let him cook. He knows what he's and who he's serving. Look what he, look what he told them people. Listen, listen to me, y'all. Look, look, look at this. 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 Pray for Babylon's well-being. If things go well in Babylon, things will go well for. You mean pray for the people that has me captive? Pray for the pot, that's captivity, that puts me in the oven. You 
can't boil the beans without a pot. So literally the pot holds the beans captive. Oh, my God. So you can put a life in there called water with the beans in there and heat it up so it can cook and be a meal to somebody. Captivity is necessary. If you ain't got no pot, the water go everywhere. You can't be cooked. Babylonians held them while the cooking took place. And when the meal was ready, guess what? Long? He said it's going to take 70 years for this meal to cook. Call it. He said, now when it's done, I'm going to take it out the oven and send you home to feed your people. You getting crazy because stuff tight? No, it needs to be tight. Some meats cook better close together. Uh oh, uh oh. If you're making a cake, see what happens from life. If the pot is too big, the cake becomes thinner. So if I need a fluffy cake, I get a tighter pan. So it all holds to that mixture's been held captive for 22 minutes. Transform to go from batter to a cake. Some of you are real. It may take some of y'all looking out pills and wondering why they happening. Baby, you are a brisket. It takes 18 hours to cook a brisket. I don't care how you do it, like she said, it takes about seven hours to make a good rope. I ain't going to go there. And some of y'all are noodles. 180 seconds and you're done. That's why we cook you last. So, now I don't know about you, man. But I can't stand cold food. Do I have any cooks in the back that can stand cold food? You know why they back there working so hard to make sure it's all hot when we get out of class? Why would I cook noodles at the beginning of an 18 hour cooking cycle? First of all, we're going to eat them noodles up. I'm cooking them to eat because I ain't finna eat for about 18 hours. You know what I discovered with a lot of these people? You can't rush perfection. And the cook that we're talking about is perfect. His name is God. You can't get there after two hours. If he said it takes 18 hours to make it. He said, I know this. If I'm going to put all y'all in there for eight, 70 years, all y'all going to be where I need you to be. Just let him. Oh, God. What is wrong with me? Nothing, baby. Take you a little longer to cook. You look at Mac. Well, what, why he got it? Well, he cooked 20 hours before you got on the grill. You, you don't know what God doing with these people. That's why I don't want you in my pot. You want to stick a pot, stick a spoon in, and stick it in your mouth? I wish you would. And here's another thing: a, a cook is never surprised with his meal. Oh, anybody cook? You know how they cook? How you know? Cause I don't taste it. You got a little taste bowl. That's why most cooks don't eat when the food done. You know what they say on them all them cook shows? Anisha, he said, I dare you cook something you haven't tasted. That's points deducted.
I make this dish called, I make some uh, homemade uh, picante sauce. Y'all, I can cook. <laughs> and I mix it all together, Amy. I will give me some, uh, some of them green onions along with them, just cut them up. Now, one thing I'm learning, how much to cut it? I just, you know what, just put it all in. If they gonna eat it. The stronger it is, the better it tastes. Now, at the end, I put my seasons in at the end, darling. So I got to keep stirring and tasting. Keep stirring and tasting. When I got the taste, I got to put a little bit more to make sure I can taste it everywhere I dip. See, y'all, some of y'all just serving crap. No, you ain't even, you just put it, you know that, how you know it's good? Now, I'm learning how to bake. So, uh, I'm looking at the cake. I'm like, man, this don't look right. She said, it ain't right. Leave it in about 12 more minutes. I said, how you know? Play a minute. Let me tell you what I do. Don't you know a professor can eyeball you? Don't you know God can eyeball you and tell you? Oh, no, she ain't ready. You know what, man? I heard a preacher this morning. I forgot his name. He woke me up. I'm like, wow. He said, every part of you have to be touched before you're served. Every part of you have to be touched before you're served. That's why the potter puts you on the potter's wheel. And he touches your attitude. He touches your angry spirit. He touches your kindness. He touches your weaknesses. So when he puts you in the fire to serve you as a vase, you've been touched all over. Have you ever cooked some? Have you ever cooked some and left some of it hanging out? Okay, now, now when I was frying chicken, I'm just trying to help you show you how God rolls. When I fry chicken, but I gotta have enough grease in the pot, cause I like all my chicken smeared. You know, he had it. You know, and I don't know why I like the gristle on the on the leg. That leg, that little gristle on the end down there. Any of y'all be waiting on that to come out? I mean, that little piece right there on the end. You, you know, that leg. You know, not the front end, the knuckle part down there. It got a little, it even got a little old scale on it. <laughs> now, if that ain't cooked, it ain't good. Am I lying? Am I lying? That's how it go. Because it connects all of it. And when you're really cooking it, that skin breaks loose right there at the little knuckle. Y'all act like y'all don't know how to cook, boy. You, 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 you know what? You know you fry that chicken. And it's all one piece. Then you submerge the whole leg in there. That skin says. You know what you're saying? Ooh, that's going to be good. You judge a leg based on that. The cook say that ain't ready. The people say, oh, yeah, it's ready. Ain't ready. You know how many people used to, Jerry come on my, used to come on my house and tell me, it's ready. I said, you ain't cooking. Mm. I'm cooking. Right. You know how many of y'all tell God I'm ready? God said, you ain't cooking. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, I can handle it, God. He said, no, you can't. You're too rough. You ain't tender enough. Your teeth bad. I, I got to let you get a little more softer. Uh-oh. Because ain't nothing like a rough neck bone. You know why it's rough? Because you leave too much meat on it. When it's done, it'll tear. Do I have a neck bone eating in here? If it ain't ready, if it can't tear, it ain't done. And you get mad because you leave all that meat in there. It's already not enough to start with. God said 70 years. Oh, y'all going to be done. Y'all going to be done. 70 years of captivity. In the fire, going through stuff. After 70 years, how, how you know? Because he said, in 70 years, I'm going to release you. Because y'all, 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 y'all got the Bible still open. Don't let all those so-called preachers and know it alls who are all over the place take you with their lies. See, I'm going to let you be in captivity so all that crap can come by. All these lies they're going to tell you to believe them. 
just in order until you stay in there. Just because the, the room smells good don't mean it's done. The smell lets you know it's cooking, not that it's ready. And some people lie to you tell me, you ready? No, you ain't ready yet, baby. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. He, the preacher's a lie to get you to follow him. You know the sad part is, you'll, fly, you'll follow a lying preacher faster than you really want to tell the truth. If I was in here talking crazy to you, sitting in the morning, you tell, oh, he's the best thing since sliced bread. I'm an open book. Oh, something wrong with him. <laughs> That's about right. You like trash. You don't want truth. Because he said, oh, taste and see. How do we taste God? By the lies that he tells us. By the cooking he's done with you. When, he, when a person cut into you, do you have a word for them? Or do you have mess for them? You, you, do, do, are you solid all the way through or are you, are you kind of milky in the middle? Even though the chicken is, is, is brown, it ain't done yet. Won't tell you how you know it ain't done. It won't float. Something is, 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 is some rawness in there still holding it down. Because when it's cooked all the way through, bloop, 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 it's French fries, all oh, that's when I tell you don't know how to cook. When you fry something, it ain't ready until it float. I've taken the impurities out. When it floats, now it's ready to be served as a meal. Seventy years, then you'll be done. By seventy years, some impurities got to come out. See, I got to let them lie and preach to somebody. It's, it's right here in the text. I, I, I got to let them people. Uh, 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 don't, 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 don't let all those so-called, so-called preachers and know-it-alls who are all over the place. They take you in with their lie. They, 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 they ain't them. They think they better than me. I told you you're going to be in captivity. They tell you, you ain't got to be in captivity. You can't support that with scripture. And the sad part, a lot of people follow that. Don't pay any attention to the fantasies they keep coming up with to please you. If I'm pleasing you, I'm not good for you. I'm supposed to make you mad when you leave here sometimes. Some of you still looking at me like you're mad from last week. I don't care. Go somewhere, because when I come in tomorrow, I got another one for you. I, I'm going to tell you what does say the Lord. And when you get home, it always kind of ring a little different. Why you in here, you looking around getting mad at people. You ain't paying attention. You just looking. Well, why she looking mad? Maybe I'm supposed to be mad. No, you're supposed to be cooking. I'm cooking you. And everywhere you go, people are going to tell you a lie. Yeah. You ever borrow something? When it starts getting done, all that stuff comes on top. You got to skim the top of it because that's trash. That ain't. Some of y'all think that's the meat. That's trash. And you done put seasons in it. And made that, that, baby, the stuff that's in there is supposed to, what you're supposed to be eating. This is just the stuff that's left over that's coming from the impurities of what's being cooked. Yeah. All right. That's the soot. You cooking soot thinking you're cooking a meal because you can't cook. The cook skim that I've done them is take it out so it don't be in the roof. I don't need that in the pot liquor. That was something that was being cooked to get rid of. Somebody talk to me up here that know how to cook. Let him cook. Remember this little boy went up to uh, this, 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 this goldsmith. He said, what are you doing? He said, stir it, turn it up. Stir it and turn it up. Stir it and turn it up. He said, what are you doing? I'm getting it ready to be, to be used. He said, why are you turning it up? He said, turn it up. He said, stir it, turn it up. I'm stirring it to keep it loose. I'm turning it up to keep it hotter. 
because I'm turning and heeding the imperatives from the top. They say, well, how do you know when to stop and turn? He said, when I can see myself. What God doing? He's stirring you and turning the heat up. He's stirring you, getting your life, loosening your life up and turning the heat up because you got some impurities in you. There's some imperfections. So, so when does God stop stirring you and stop putting your heat? When he can see himself. When you think the way he thinks. Ooh. When you carry yourself the way he carries. When he can look at you and see him in everything he's doing. You know what he said? Now you're ready to be See on that real daughter, all the meat pulled back. Not just one or two of them ribs. Back. All that meat said, hey, this rack is ready. Because the proof is it's done pulled back. Ooh. When God starts serving you, it's proof you're ready. Because you're not going to serve you have done. A real cook. Now, now watch this. True story. Them briskets, somebody said them briskets. They wasn't too bad. I ate it and it had a good taste. But I can't send that over to Carl, the house, and the boys, the family, eating that crap. Talking about the pastor cooked that? Now my reputation too good. So let me tell you what I did. I, I, that is. God, a lot of stuff you're doing, God ain't put his name on that. You got all this stuff that you can't pay for. That ain't God. That's you. That's you listening to Satan. You go buy all this stuff and try to impress people you don't like with money you don't have for people you don't even care about. You're just wasting your time. That ain't God. Because the blessing of the Lord make it and ask no. That ain't him. You struggling too hard, baby. That ain't kill food. You, 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 that ain't my real. You struggling too hard to pull that out. My fault. You, don't, you know what it's taught me? To put about two on my food. Oh, it wants to, man, my steak makes its own gravy. You, you don't need nothing but a fart. You don't need no nothing. You know why I can say that? Because I cook with love. I taste it in your mouth. Because if I can taste it in mine, I know how it's going to taste in yours. So if I won't eat it, Mac, if you ain't palatable to God, you ain't palatable for the king. That's why some of you got to keep cooking. You ain't ready yet. You're not palatable for the kingdom. Because if somebody eat you and don't get the, the kingdom out of it, that's on God. You remember when Jesus went to that fig tree? It was green. And it had leaves on it. You remember we had that boy come here talking about you little leafy Christian, you look safe. But when somebody come to you for a spiritual word, you ain't got it. Y'all, we playing with this thing that God don't mind. God don't play with this, y'all. He ain't playing with you about you. You mean more to God than you mean to yourself. I need you right, Amelia, because there's people waiting to taste you, and they tasted me in you. That's why I'm letting you go through them struggles. I'm trying to build you up. I'm, 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 I'm getting you ready so when somebody got an issue, you can tell them God is real, baby. Your story, with when you got a problem and somebody hears your story, they're going to apologize to God. Lord, forgive me for worrying about mine because what they going through, I could never go through. Lord, forgive me. I promise you, if you brought all your issues to this altar and you left all your problems and you'll start seeing them other people, tell me, Lord, forgive me, excuse me. Can I get my, this mine over here? Give me, give me mine over here. Give me, you know why? Because I couldn't handle what you went through, and you can't handle what I'm going through. But God takes all of it to make us be who we are. Let him cook. Let him cook. Look what he say. What he say. <laughs> Ye 
Yes. Believe it or not, this is the message from God of the angel's army. Israel's God. Don't let all those so-called preachers and know-it-all who are all over the place uh, 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 take you in with their lies. Don't pay attention to the fantasies that they keep coming up with to please you. They're a bunch of liars preaching lies and claiming I sent them. I never sent them. Believe me, God's decree. I didn't tell them to tell you that. But the Bible says in the last days, you ain't going to want truth. That's why y'all leave here, because you got truth here. I know, it ain't got to do with me. This is truth. Some of you set your some of you starting to fish because you itching and, 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 and trying to hear at the same time. Yeah. You can't do them both. Yeah. The Bible says a double-minded person yeah. is unstable in all their way. You can't be both extremes. Oh, I'm all the way for you, but then I'm all the way against you. Now you ain't with me. Yeah. Pick one. You can't have them both. You can't be all world and fleshly and think you're gonna walk in the spirit. You gotta pick one. Yeah. They leave in gravy. All that meat's in the gravy. That dry meat is dry. You can't have them both. They're going to cook different. I ain't lying to you. I'm telling you what he said. It's in the. Shall I read from this? You can make all you want to. He said it, not me. And you say you say saved, right? Anybody here saved? We say we're doing it God's way, right? There it is right there. Now, if you want something else, that's go on down the street. You want to be a Muslim, go find out what they're doing with, Bo- with, uh, with, with Muhammad. You want to be a Buddhist, go find out what they're doing with Buddha. We're talking about Christ. This is what we're doing, Christ. Christ is the cooker. And food don't argue with the cook. The hardest piece of meat, if you're bored, you're long enough, it gets out. You hard, right? That's why you got to stand there a little longer. Ain't nothing too hard for God. Somebody say ain't nothing. Oh, you going to be hardcore and not bow down to me? Okay, watch this. Oh, you going to bow down. You going to bow down. Some of y'all are getting your head busted because you're stubborn. You got to die to yourself. Your way ain't the way. You can't tell me that I show okay because you ain't hearing. He won't even let you hear me. You just see my lips moving right now. Some of you ain't hearing nothing I'm saying. You know why? Because he shuts you off. There's some meat that's cooked. Sometimes you take a piece off and rub it apart. Let me see what that do. That piece is interrupting my flow. Ooh. And some of you are interrupting his flow. You ain't even you ain't even in the heat. You on the channel. I'm not gonna even give you that to the I'm not gonna even give you to the dog. You'll make them sick. That's why Jesus says, I am the truth, I'm my father. He knows why to cut and who to cut. Because I'm gonna cut to where Mo comes. And we get cut on what was cut off. No, baby, they, we're cutting it off so more can, you slow. I'm going to let you see a few fruit to show you that more fruit are coming. If God cut with some more, that means he got more coming. On, 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 uh, in a few minutes, it's going to be a whole bunch of meat back there. Make your own, hot, make your own, what they call that thing? Taco. Yeah, you can put your own meat on there. Now, they're going to have to tell you all now. You know what we're talking about. We from the hood. Some of you stay in uh, Sunnyvale hood. The hood ain't the address to your mind. Some of you are too hoodie. So we got to serve. You can't let you serve yourself. Because you're going to overindulge. Because you're scared it ain't going to be no more. It ain't going to be no, for, no it, won't, it ain't going to be more for nobody else if you keep eating all that. Eat you a little bit. Let everybody come through and come and get what you want. 
You want it all now? You ain't going to eat me. You just, what do you tell them? Just take what you're going to get for the day. Don't be trying to, don't be trying to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, take care of it. What, I'm going to get this for lunch. No. You may not live for lunch tomorrow. Now you got our stuff. Oh, this, I tell people all the time, baby, don't really get mad when it's gone. You know the cook. We can make some more. The cook is your friend. What a friend. You ain't got all of it. It can be some more. It's, it's okay. You see how we supposed to walk? I know the cook. You know the cook. I don't care if we love all the ribs. I know the cook. And, and, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm trying to stop you. And, and, and because the cook know you, he already made you a slave. You ain't got to fight the crowd. God's your cook. He done put you up a plate, done made something for you extra from the start. Because I know it's going to be so good for you, Donna. I'm going to let you take this home. See, it ain't, it ain't stealing when the cook gets to you. Uh-oh. Hey, 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 it ain't stealing when the cook cook for you, baby. When the cook gets to you, he wants you to have everything he put on that thing. I'd be like, shh, chill out. I got, I got you, chill out. The Lord be saying, chill out. Yeah. Yeah. I be telling some folks, go on and eat what's on the table. Oh, okay. I already got your lunch put up. Don't worry about it. What you say, I, already got I already got you. Yeah, I be cooking sometimes and tell you the people you hear my spirit. Hey, look here, okay, I got you. Hey, you at home? Yeah, I'll be right in a minute. I know what you like. And then watch this. Watch this. Somebody say, watch this. I ain't sitting around and watch this because hell I know it's good. I ain't gonna come up. I'm gonna see if you go cook it. No. If you don't, it's your loss. They're a bunch of liars, preaching lies, and claiming I sent them. I never sent them. Believe me, God's the creator. You, you know what they were saying, man? It ain't going to take 70 years. That's a lie. You don't have to build no house. You don't have to plant no vegetables. And some people believe that crap. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Verse 10. Here it is. This is God's word on the subject. As soon as Babylon 70 years are up, not a day before. Look what he said. I'll show up. These are shouting words, okay? I told you it's going to be 70 years, not a day before. It's almost ready now. It's, it's, you know when to take it out of the oven, Brandon. You're not a cook. Just take it out of the oven in 45 minutes. It's going to be ready. I'm telling you, in 70 years, not a day before, I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back home. I know what I'm I know what I'm doing. I know what I promised you. I know how long it told you it's going to be. And here's what you can stand on. On the 70th year of the first day, I'm coming. Ooh, y'all ain't getting this. Y'all ain't getting this. I'm coming, Mac, just like I told you I would. Why? Because I know what I'm doing. Here's the punch. Here's the punch. You don't. You just got to trust me. Look what he said. 
I'll show up and take care of you as I promised and bring you back. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. When you call on me, when you come and pray for me, I'll listen. I'll give you what I promised you. I'll give you. I'll do what I said I would do. It's going to take the time that I told you it's going to take. You're going to build in the land that I told you to build. You're going to plant what I told you to plant and feed yourself. And there's going to come a time. There's going to come a time when I'm going to come get you. It reminds me of a story over 2,000 years ago when Jesus, my big brother, put an old rugged cross up on his shoulder and marched up to Calvary. Some of you may want to say, Calvary, that's where they took your Savior and my Lord. They nailed his hands. They ribbed his feet. They locked it between the earth and the sky. And the Bible said that he died. Help me say he died. He died till it got midnight in the middle of the day. He died till the whole world began to reel and rock. He died till the centurion soldiers said, Surely, surely, surely. This must be the Son of God. Took him off an old rugged cross. Said, I'm going to get up in three days. That is, my time frame is three days. Stay there all night Friday. Stay there all day Saturday. Stay there all night Saturday night. But early, early Sunday morning, the cook said, I'm going to get up with all power. And on Sunday morning, he got up with all power. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Saving power, healing power, loving power, forgiving power, giving power, all power is in his hands. What I'm telling you, church, Everywhere you check the book, God recipe works. If he says it's going three days, you can count on it. If he says 70 years, count on it. He said, I've never, I'm young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seen begging bread. Let God cook. You ain't going to understand it because you're not the cook. Stop questioning the cook. And appreciate the process. Stop getting mad because he balling you. He know why he balling you. Let God cook. Let Quit trying to figure out. God, God ain't gonna let you know his recipe. Now, now my grandmother, Georgia Mae Wesley, every time I wanted some caramel cake, down for years, she said, give me some money and I'll make it. I ain't giving you my recipe. You in my business. One day I went on and said, grandmother, Maria, what Keela? I'm your grandmama, I call her what I want to call you. Keela, what you want? I said, I'm going to make me some, you make me some calm ice and from a cake. She said, get a pen and paper. I said, oh, she's going to die. She don't know where you are. So guess what, Aunt Marty? 
got my, gave me a pen of paper, told me what to write. I went straight to the store and went straight home. Took a cookie. When I got it ready, I went right back to work. The cook done taught the cook how to call. And what God is saying, oh, taste and see that I'm good. So you'll go home and cook for the other people. We doing this stuff wrong. We all going to complain. We're supposed to be letting them taste us. We're supposed to let them taste the God in us. I told Mary, your dad's finna die. Don't say that. Okay. She said, how you gonna say that to me like that? I said, just call me. And ask me to come cook him some gumbo. That's the one that taught me how to cook gumbo. She said, now, Kita. <laughs> let me put my job back on. <laughs> Ain't no K-E-T-T-A on that. Keita, come here. What, 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 Miss Kenny? Take me a pot of gumbo. I done tried all this. We, we clowns now. You know, you know her name, Hizzy. Yeah, he was a cusser. We kind of got along pretty good. So we cooked it. She said, oh, my God, this is good. Don't you know you do what God tell you to do? He said, oh, my. He's saying, oh, my God, Donna, that's it. Now go give that away. Some of y'all serving stuff the cook had tasted. Bullet called me. Oh, man, Brittany. She said, oh, man, what you want for your birthday? Man, scrub. I want a cake like my mama make. Two layers. She didn't have two layers. She had three. When are you going to bring me cake? I'm working on it. But I had a member that's a cake maker. I said, dog, what's wrong with this cake? You ain't got the right stuff. I had a I had a little rubber, rubber made spatula. She had one of them things. She cut it. I'm like, what you doing? I'm making it fit. Because they would lay up down, Sister Parker, they would lay, you, you know, the first you lay it down flat with the heel on it. Then you put the flat one on top of it. That's one layer. Sister Parker, when you go to that top layer, either you turn it upside down or either way, it ain't going to work. Because that, that top layer got a heel on it. She said, boy, you got to cut that heel off. So it's, I said, oh, well, okay, okay. Now it took me two days. No, Don, I'm, I'm sitting looking at this cake like this. I don't know what this is going to be. So I let the icing get hard. So, 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 and thinking that if I put more ice in it, it work out. No. I said, hey, 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 hey. Can you meet me at the church? Yeah, I'll be there. Call the expert. Oh. Everything you ain't going to know how to do. And he have experts that know what they're doing. Quit trying to mess up the cake and call the expert. Man, it took up about two seconds. <laughs> Here it is. She said to me, that's what I do. And there are some things, Donna, that only you do. Melvin going to live for a long time. Melvin, God, he won't tell me that recipe for nothing. For, the, for, them, for them sweet potato pies, Melvin, come on, come on, I'll help you. Melvin, don't come over. No, I got to go to the store. He won't tell me nothing. I ain't trying to be his competitor. I just want to taste what I want to taste. I ain't trying to. He got married. Wife well, done copyrighted the, the recipe. She done put a picture on the cake. Got a, got a seed and you can't do. I said, boy, I wish she'd go to work. I'm going to try to kiss. I'm going to try to kiss Melvin. I'm going to have to kiss Melvin on the, when he's right. Melvin, you at home. I'm coming out here. Oh, no, 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 no. 
Baby, baby got me going to the store. She ain't got you going to the store. But there are some people, listen to me, listen to me. Only God will tell you how to be. I'm going to tell you me. So when you do me, you taste like me. <laughs> love me with all your heart. And love your neighbor as you love you. See, until we get that right, your life ain't going to matter. See, you don't know how, you don't know God's love. And you can't give love to these people you think you're giving to because you don't love you. You can't skip you in the process. Because you can't give away what you don't have. You can tell how you're struggling with self-love because you let anything go. Anybody can say anything to you, do anything to you, lie and tell you a bunch of lies and you accept it. Give them all you got. They don't have nothing for you because they don't have nothing for themselves because they don't even know God. That's not love. That's called lust. Lust is all external. He look good. She look good. Da, 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 da. Catch them when they just wake up. They look like, damn it, I'll bite you when their eyes open. You think, that, boy, you see four hours of makeup. Three hours of fixing your wig straight. Two hours of eyelashes. How they feel about themselves or nothing. You are that leafy tree. That's why you're cursed. You're cursing yourself. Because you're trying to give away something you don't have. You dress up filth. Giving the people trash. Nothing. She said, let the rich. And we're talking about Jesus, we gotta beg you to say something. Yeah. See, when you redeem, you hear his name, you know that's why you've been redeemed. Yeah. You lose your mind. Why we gotta Let him prepare you so you can be a meal to somebody else. The doors of the church are open. There may be one. There's nothing better than knowing Jesus. He will pick you up and turn. Look at God, is there another one?
Let's get a lot of hand clap of praise. Thank God for those that went back. Let God cook, man. Just let him cook. My God. Ooh. Thank you, you. I'm like, what does let it cook mean? Let him cook. Oh, daddy, that's just a slang for young folk. Uh, let God cook. Let him do what he do. Ain't that something? He doing it whether you let him or not. <laughs> Boy, I like to be so great for all of us. Hey, Amen. It's offer time. Amen. Amen. Oh, the girls taking up the offering today, huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, them struggles did this thing. 